Are you a busy woman who at times struggles with reducing your daily stress? Do you know that you need to slow down but do not know how? If you're looking at reducing your daily stress, you're in the right place. My name is Denise Eckert and I welcome you to the Calm Your Daily Stress podcast. I just love interviewing guests so they can share their stress reducing tips and techniques with you. Now, if you find this podcast helpful, please share it with someone who struggles with stress. Because lowering our stress will make us a better person, a happier partner, mom, friend, neighbor, etc. And the best part is happiness is contagious. Enjoy this episode. Hi, it's Denise, and I'm the host of the Relaxation Lounge. And I love coming on here and sharing different techniques and tips to lower the stress in your life to avoid burnout. And today I've got Julie B., and she's a speaker, author, and strategic advisor to business owners and their teams. She's an award-winning entrepreneur and engaging storyteller. Now, Julie has spoken for 14 plus years on topics, including leadership, employee engagement, workplace culture, and entrepreneurship. Her mission is to help 1 million business owners transform big ideas into easy actions that elevate their businesses by 2032. Big. <laughs> Now, Julie's leadership insights have been featured on Fast Company, Forbes, SHRM, HubSpot, and many more. Plus, she's got a book coming out with Matt Holt Books, Business Owner's Guide to Burnout, and it's scheduled to hit the bookshelves in 2024. And Matt Holt Books, okay, Matt Holt Books is an imprint of Ben Bella Books, Publishers of Traction. So welcome. So I'm so excited to speak to you, Julie. Welcome. Yeah, Denise, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this conversation. And you know what I liked about it was, because I'm always looking to see what who would be interesting on our, on the show. And when I saw that your thing was, what's great about burnout? And I just love that because yeah. it turns it around. <laughs> I really like to, whenever there's a negative, try to figure out a way to make it a positive. So that's that's one of the things that I do particularly well, I think. Awesome. Now, what inspired you to do this type of work, working with leaders and entrepreneurs and helping them with burnout? I have been a business owner for over 14 years now, and I've also been a key employee for other business owners in my uh, past career. And every business owner I know has burned out at least once. They've had at least one burnout story. There's usually one very big, massive burnout that really made them you know, change their ways. And that actually happened for me in 2021. I was doing way too much, had too many things on my plate, knew I was approaching burnout, knew I was already actually burned out, but wasn't doing anything about it. And one morning I woke up and I thought I was having a heart attack. I had five or six symptoms of having a heart attack. So I ended up uh, in the emergency room And the doctor basically told me after waiting for eight hours that my heart was fine and that I had a panic attack. And he said, do less, which is great advice. But when you're a business owner, it's, it's, you got to do a lot. You got to do a lot to do less. And what I realized during that time was there, there were no resources out there for business, specifically for business owner burnout. There's a lot of burnout resources um, there's a lot of generic advice, but there's there wasn't really anything that like dug into um, burnout for business owners other than the advice to take a vacation, which, you know, most business owners, they're not going to do that until they fix whatever the issue is. So I just kind of documented what I, w- what I did uh, on that path and realized I had had pieces and parts of a system, but I basically put it all into a book and then uh, wrote a book. And then I started coaching and I, and I coach around other topics too, like leadership, managing, delegating. I work with a lot of uh, key employees of business owners to help them elevate from manager to leader. But at the end of the day, burnout is something that I think every business owner is going to face. And my philosophy is if you know it's coming, why not plan, plan for it and know what it looks like and you know do what you can to prevent it or at least do what you can to when it does happen recover from it more quickly oh you know and that's great advice but it's seriously it's a lot harder um to do than it is to say you know Mm -hmm. it's um because I know I went through the same thing my doctor said slow down and it's like 
what does that mean? You know, and I find too with business owners, we have the sole responsibility for our business. Mm -hmm. And then what do you find the worst that business owners do to themselves once they start getting into that burnout? They, they don't want to admit they're burned out to themselves. I think that's probably the worst thing they do because it, it, that does two things. It delays them being able to address it and it makes the burnout ultimately, it makes it worse when it does eventually present you with something like a panic attack where you absolutely like, there's no, you know, there, you, you have to deal with that. I mean, I've talked to business owners who have had heart attacks, who have had strokes, who have had going through divorce and that's what woke them up to the fact they were burned out. So I think that's probably the biggest thing that business owners do that that doesn't help them any is they don't want to admit to themselves a lot of the times that they are burned out because there's I think there's two reasons to that. One, they feel like it's they're failing. Um, and then two, there's this concept or this thought of, well, you're a business owner, so you did this to yourself. Not not inaccurate. I mean, it is kind of, you know, it's our job to have our boundaries, but I think when business owners think that they kind of think it's just part of the job description and they just have to suck it up and move forward. So, you know, I think those are the two of the main reasons why business owners don't want to admit they're burned out. Yeah, I agree with that. And that is, it, it's the fear of, you feel like you're failing, mm-hmm. you know, you're not on top of it, but um, so when people start to feel that and they, they know they're heading for burn it, what advice can you give the audience here? Well, I mean, the first thing I out of out of the gate, I want business owners to have a an idea of what normal looks like for them, because I once I mean, well, not more than once I've had business owners say to me, well, what am I ever not burned out? What does that even look like? So I think it's really important even before you kind of get to this point to know and there's a lot of measurables that you can put in here to know, you know, how many hours of sleep is normal for you most nights? Um, how often do you exercise? How often do you meditate or journal? Or one big red flag for me is I will cancel doctor's appointments because I don't think I have time for them. So that, that actually is a red flag of my own. So I think before we even get to the point of I'm burned out, knowing what normal looks like is really important. But when, when you get to that point, um, the one thing I would say is realize you're not going through it alone and reach out to your support group, whether that is, you know, a mastermind group, a CEO forums group, or your partner, or, you know, we business owners, our lives, our personal lives and our businesses are so intertwined that, you know, you, you, you might have a friend who's also a business owner who is kind of on both sides, you know, in your personal life and in your business life, you know, reach out to your support group. And then you, you have, you must make some space to actually address and recover from the burnout that you're, you're going through and making spaces isn't always about making time on your calendar. There's a couple of steps there's a, there's a few steps you can do to make that a little bit easier. Cause when, again, when business owners hear, oftentimes when they hear make space, they're like, I, how do I even make space? I don't even know how to do that. Like, I don't have any time. Well, you know, you don't deal with your burnout. Your burnout is probably, I've seen burnout literally cause businesses to close. So, you know, is it going to be you or your business um, is kind of what I, what I usually say. I, I mean, honestly, sometimes they just need a reality check. Um, but I think it's important for them to know they're not alone and that I, I've i talked to over 1,500 business owners at this point. There's only been one person, one business owner, when I've asked them if they've ever been burned out, who has said no. And that individual, I think, was in business for just just over a year. So just you know, anecdotally, that's why I say I think it's unavoidable that business owners burn out because I I only know one person who has said they've never burned out. Well, I know for myself being a business owner, we tend to work in flow as well, right? Mm-hmm. And and we get so involved in one of you know in our projects that we don't sense what time it is or how long we've been spending the time, which is great. But then we stay too long in that, mm-hmm. and and then we start doing damage to ourselves. Like I know I've done this so many times and if I would have gotten up, walked away, 
did something else or just went outside for a couple hours or just changed things up, things would have been different. But no, we tend to, this needs to be done today or this needs to be done now. And it's really, I know for myself, because it's like you're talking to me because I've been self-employed most of my life. And it is really hard just to sometimes walk away. And taking that space, as you said, it's not taking a trip. It's not going on vacation. Mm -hmm. It's giving yourself that that leeway really and when you get into when you get into the space of not being able to step away from your desk i I always encourage business owners to try to decide and discern if they're working on you know what i call false fires which are things that appear to be on fire but really aren't you know and one of the easiest ways to tell that is can will will this be okay tomorrow like can i work on this tomorrow and it still be okay um and, and, you know, sometimes you got to kind of check yourself on that as well. And then, you know, the other time, there are times in business where I, I think especially if you're a visionary or um, a futurist or creator, if you're, if you're one of, and if you fall into one of those categories, like I'm, I'm also a maker. I just took this really amazing assessment called the Sparky type <laughs> and explained a lot about me. But when I'm in a, when I'm in a space of creativity, um, I'm in this space of flow and I'm just like creating new things or getting new things pushed forward. And that's really exciting. And that's part of the reason why it's fun to be a business owner is because you get to do some of those things. So I think it's, you know, you kind of have to learn how to discern between is this, is this thing that I'm working on? If I don't want to be working on it, is it actually a fire that I have to put out right now? Or can, is it a fire that can wait for tomorrow? And then if you're in that state of flow, you know, just, if it's the other side of this is something I really just don't want to stop working on because I love it so much. You just have to be aware of that. And um, one thing that I I use in my personal life to kind of help me keep boundaries is I actually have forced what I call forced hobbies. (laughs) So they are, uh, for example, I volunteer on, on a board of directors and that absolute absolutely makes me stop working on work and go do something other than work, which is, you know, I, I love doing that volunteer work. And I also have some other hobbies that I do, but I, I like the idea of having something that forces you to go, go do something else that you cannot, you know, you can't make up an excuse to not do it. You know, just that is a good little strategy, little nugget that you can use to, to get yourself out of that, you know, just being stuck at your desk. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, too, is like being stuck at the desk. Mm -hmm. It's our shoulders. It's our neck. It's like right now I'm dealing with a little bit of tendonitis and carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I remember when I used to have my dog, I, okay, I'm going, okay, I'm going to finish this little project now. And then I'm going to go take her for a walk. And it would be such a nightmare for me to get out that door. Mm -hmm. And once I got out that door, then I didn't want to come back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now I'm out there enjoying myself, but you just think, you know, you almost feel guilty leaving your work mm-hmm. as well, which, yeah, it's all in our heads. Yeah, there's a lot of guilt, I think, and business owners in general, I think, carry a lot of guilt, um, guilt, and it comes from all angles. It comes from, you know, guilt, feeling guilty for not finishing that thing that your employee needs you to finish because so they can do their next thing or guilt from not being able to attend a, you know, birthday party or a t-ball game or whatever it is, because you need to go speak at this networking thing. You know, there's all these levels of, there's all these levels of, of guilt that I think business owners, you know, if they allow it can really, um, can, I mean, just that alone, I mean, just feeling that alone can, can lead somebody to feel burned out. So it's it's one of those emotions that I think business owners just have to really kind of have their arms around and also figure out ways to balance it that work for them in their lives. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, there's a couple of tricks that I've learned over the years. Like, for instance, I don't have a to-do list. Mm-hmm. I have a list of things I, I would like to do. And then every day, you know, depends on how I feel and how much time I have, I'll pull one of those off. Because we do, we we tend to put so much on our plate and then we put ourselves in that rut and it's just so easy to do. Now, if someone is starting to feel that burnout and you kind of said, 
And I'll make a plan for once you start feeling it. So you said giving ourselves space and seeing what's normal for us. Are there any other suggestions that you can give the audience? Yeah. So in order to make that space, two of the big, two of the biggest things that I recommend is um, there's a couple of things I recommend in my book, but the first one is to say no to new. So anything new, (laughs) you know, and there are outliers to this rule. Like if it's a once in a life to truly a once in a lifetime opportunity, you might have, you might want to say yes to it, but if it's some, if it's an opportunity that's going to be around six months from now, say no to it. That'll help you open up some space to work on burnout. And then the other thing is, is I recommend business owners look at the big picture initiatives that they have going on in their business. Everything from, I mean, some of the things I've heard over the years are, you know, we're moving our office, we're hiring a new, you know, salesperson, we're, um, you know, we're do, go, starting a rebrand to, I need to find a new tax accountant because my old one really messed something up in my taxes. <laughs> so, what you know, those are kind of outside of the scope of your normal day-to-day operations. And I, I always tell business owners to take a look at those big picture initiatives that they're working on and, and determine which ones you can pause. Because again, you know, you might be in the middle of one, but it might be something worth pausing because those tend to take a lot of time and a lot of energy from a business owner, um, those strategic level uh, initiatives. And so if you can pause some of those, then you can start to create some some space, both in time and energy and honestly, location wise for you to work through burnout. And then once you um, once you are ready to, to recover from burnout. And, and this is so I, I kind of split burnout into addressing the problem. So addressing the problem surrounding burnout is the first step. And I always tell business owners, it, uh, this is where a band-aid plan or a quick fix plan is okay. And this is where you bring your team in to help them figure out that plan and implement it. So, you know, put the, put the fire out, for, first of all. And then the next thing you do is you got to think about recovering personally, because just because the fire has been put out and the problems dealt with, at least in the short term, then there's the step of taking care of yourself. So when you get to that point, I I say rely on things that you know have worked to make you feel better in the past. Don't recreate the wheel here. You know, it's great if you want to try a new hobby. This probably isn't the time to try a new hobby unless that's the thing you really, you know, you unless you're like, I absolutely have to do this, then okay, go try it. But like for me, for example, um, I like to paddleboard and I also like to go for a walk with a backpack on that has some weights on it. Um, and those are, those are things that I know work for me already. And, and then you just, you do some of those, you just start doing some of those activities. And the rule of thumb there is, is it's something that you can start pretty quickly. Um, and that's why I say vacations don't really work to fix burnout because, you know, most, most business owners can't just all of a sudden decide to take a vacation in a week or two from now. (laughs) So you need that recovery time and those recovery actions sooner than a vacation usually arrives. And um, yeah, just focus on the things that you know work. And, you know, meditation is a great one. Meditation is one that I I practice. Um, There's so many different types of care you can give yourself, but focus on something you know works when you're in the spot of recovering from burnout. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start wrapping this up. So is there some wise words of wisdom from Julie B that you'd like to leave the audience with? Well, I would say, I mean, overall, my guidance to most people is to always bet on yourself. I think business owners in particular, just invest in yourself, bet on yourself, um, because you are the best investment you can make. Uh, That's, that's Julie B's like, that's my like (laughs) overall advice. But when it comes to burnout, you know, we started talking about what's great about it. Um, At the end of the day, once you kind of go through a burnout, you get a very clear sense of what is an absolute heck yes. I'm going to do that as a yes. And this is an absolute no. It helps you figure out even more clearly what's an absolute less yes for you. And what's an absolute no for you when you're presented with opportunities. And usually along the way of that journey, you're going to have a couple of uh, aha moments. You're going to have a couple of ideas that come up and quite frankly, my book would not have existed if I had not gone through the burnout. So 
you know, on the other side of it, you get these leverage points of um, ideas that you can you can build from. So if you're if you're willing to look for it and and see the silver linings, burnout can actually help you elevate yourself and your business in the future. And I can't wait to read your book, actually. <laughs> I'm excited for it too. <laughs> Had to come out. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing too. Like you're very practical in your advice towards burnout. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people, you know, it's one extreme to another, but it managing our stress as a business owner is part of being a business owner mm -hmm. and recognizing that, okay, we've had too much where we need to change mm -hmm. things around. Not necessarily, as you said, step back, but it's just making those little changes to make things different. Yeah. Yeah. And then practicing them every day because burnout is just stress that has gotten way out of control and that you can't see an end to. So, you know, we're going to be stressed as business owners. Um, the goal is to not let it take us out of the game. And where do you recommend people look for support as well? Is there anything that you can recommend for business owners? Well, I mean, I would, I, I would always say the first step is making sure you have your own support group. And there are so many, I mean, there's all kinds of CEO, masterminds, small business owner groups, some are paid, some are free. So, you know, make sure you have support on both sides, make sure you have support on the business side and then on the, you know, personal life side. Um, and that can be in the form of best friend, spouse, therapist, you know, whatever, you know, I always I always defer to the experts if if they're if you think you have, you know, if you're dealing with something like depression, you definitely get some some medical help there. But then I mean, I talk about burnout all the time. You can go to my my website and you can, you know, follow me on social media because we, you know, talk about it all the time. And um I think the mo again, I think the most important thing is though just talk to somebody. Don't 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 suffer in silence and talk to somebody about it because You'd be surprised when you ask for help, when you say you need help with something, how many people in your network actually will raise their hand and, and help you out. And the reason why I think, too, is because they've experienced it themselves. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And a lot of times, like, if, I mean, a lot of I've there are different tiers of friends. I have business friends and then I have friends that don't have their own business. Mm -hmm. And the burnout for an entrepreneur, I find, is very different than being a mom and having too much on your plate yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to find that support group. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes the support group that has nothing to do with work is the support group that, you know, get you out of even thinking about work, which is, which is also nice to have. I mean, I think you need to have that as a business owner as well. Like the paddleboard group, right? <laughs> yeah. The paddleboard group or my, you know, the board of directors that I volunteer with, like when I, I'm with them, we're not talking about my business for sure. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> you know, everybody needs that break. And if you're, if you're not good at, if, if you struggle to set those boundaries yourself, I mean, I, you know, find something that where somebody else is kind of holding you accountable to show up a running group, uh, you know, whatever. I, I mean, every hobby has a group for every, so just, you know, find somebody where, find something where you, there's some accountability to showing up um, and doing something other than working on your business. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Julie. And anybody who's interested in finding out more information or asking Julie questions, everywhere you'll be watching or listening to this, I'll be putting all her information, her social media channels, et cetera. Well, thank you so much for your time, Julie. It was a pleasure. It's a Thanks good spin to look at a different way of looking at Burnett. I love it. Thanks, Denise, for having me. I really enjoyed our conversation. Well, thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Calm Your Daily Stress podcast. Have you ever wondered what your stress personality is? Are you a self-care goddess or a burnout queen? Well, you can find out by taking my free quiz you just need to go to www.stressquiz.info to find out where you rank. Sending you love and peace, and I'll see you in the next episode.